Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my Zone 5B vegetable garden. Well, yesterday I did a lot of things in the garden because the weather was absolutely gorgeous. Today on video shooting day, it's the opposite. It's cold, it's windy, but we're gonna have to make the best of it. So what I want to do today is to show you how to plant broccoli and carrots, and I've got some unusual tips to share with you. Well, I've got my usual springtime audience assembled and they're ready for me to start planting. Let's see. This is a cedar waxwing in case you're curious, and there's more of his friends nearby. So these are Monflor broccoli. I started them indoors from seed, and the seeds came from Territorial Seed Company. Usually I grow early dividend, but Bill wanted to try this new variety this year. The description says that it matures in 63 days, which is pretty quick, and that its unique branched heads have tall crowns with long clean stems that make meal prep easy with a single cut to separate it into bite-sized florets. So I thought, you know, that sounds like a good one. Let's give it a try. I moved them out to our little greenhouse a couple of weeks back, and I've also been hardening them off, which is the gradual process of acclimating them to the outdoor temperatures and the intensity of the sunlight. This is the raised bed that I'm going to grow broccoli in this year. And for soil prep, I gently loosened the soil a little bit near the top. I did not turn the soil over because that is very damaging to the soil structure where different types of microorganisms live and do good things for our plants. I also added some of our homemade compost and I added a few worm castings in as well. This raised bed is three feet wide by eight feet long. Ordinarily, I grow my broccoli in a four foot wide bed but I always rotate my crops around, and that is for fewer insect and disease problems. And so I'm just gonna make do. I have 12 seedlings. That's a bit much for this size bed, but you know, when they're in pots, that makes it nice for laying them out and seeing where they might fit. So hopefully I can get them all in here. You'll notice this bed has a drip irrigation system on it. That is called drip tape, and I love drip irrigation because it is great for conserving moisture because there's minimal evaporation. And it puts the water right at the soil surface where the plant's roots can take it up. Okay, I think this is gonna work. When planting a seedling from a container, you never want to grab onto the stem to pull it out. And that's because you can crush the cells that help transport moisture and nutrients. It can also kill the plant, so that's not good. Instead, just put your hand like so and tip the pot upside down and bring it out that way. And look at that nice root system. It's not root bound, which is great. And then I'm going to dig a hole that is about the size of the pot. Put it in. And I'm just kind of supporting the plant. And with my other hand, I'm moving the soil around the base. Then I'm going to press gently, and that's to eliminate air pockets. I'll also be watering the seedlings in a bit for the same purpose. Now it's time for me to water in the seedlings. You'll notice I'm using a water wand. That makes it easy for me to water the soil rather than the plants because it's really a good idea to keep the leaves dry as best you can. Then you will tend to have less disease issues. If you're curious, and I don't have any association with the company, but this is a DRAM water wand. They make really good quality watering tools and also garden tools, and they're very easy to find in garden centers, home centers, and also in hardware stores. So I'm just watering them in, partly because they're thirsty, and also because I wanted to get rid of any air pockets, as I mentioned earlier. 
If you're wondering why some of the leaves on the plants are purple, that is telling me that they needed more nutrients and so they should find most of those in the soil. But I'm also going to fertilize them in a moment. Okay, now to feed the seedlings. So I have mixed up a nitrogen fertilizer that is a liquid one. And what you need to do whenever you're choosing a fertilizer for a plant is you need to stop and think, what is this plant supposed to do in my garden? When it comes to broccoli, it needs to have a lot of greenery and it's going to create those heads that we all love to eat. If you think about a root crop, it needs to put on root growth. And if you think about plants that need to bloom and set fruit, like melons, peppers, tomatoes, and so on, they have special needs as well. So in this case, again, because they are going to be producing a lot of greenery, they need a high nitrogen fertilizer. On fertilizer packages, nitrogen is the first number on the package. It should be the highest to help them produce nice leafy green growth. For root crops, you want a fertilizer that has the middle number as the highest because that is phosphorus. And if you also are growing something that needs to bloom and set fruit, that requires a lot of phosphorus as well. But for today, I'm just focusing on nitrogen. Okay, let's talk about bugs for a minute. So broccoli is a member of the cabbage family. And other members include Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, kohlrabi, rutabagas, turnips, arugula, and radishes. So it's really quite a large plant family. Unfortunately, members of the cabbage family are bug magnets. You know, I always call them that because it's the truth. Of my entire garden, this is where the insects can be a problem. Fortunately, I have some solutions to keep them away. But first, let's talk about the types of insects that bother cabbage family crops. Aphids is one of them. And if you've ever harvested a lovely head of broccoli only to discover it has aphids just all through it, that's awful. There's also cabbage worms. And depending upon where you live and what kinds of insects are around you, they are either the offspring of the cabbage white butterfly or two types of moths. So there are cabbage worms, diamondback caterpillars, and cabbage loopers. Now the easiest way to deal with them is by putting some type of a cover over your crops so that it acts as a barrier to keep those insects away from the plants. You don't need to kill the bugs. You just need to prevent them from getting to your plants. Now, in the past, I've always used floating row cover, and you can see some of it on some of the beds behind me. It's a lightweight fabric that lets sunlight and moisture through it. So if it were to rain, the water will go through it, and that has worked great. But broccoli and other cabbage family crops are cool season crops, and they probably don't appreciate being a little warmer under that cover. I've also used tool or bridal veil netting, and I like that except the holes really aren't quite as small as I'd like to keep all of those aphids out. And it's also more delicate. So as I've mentioned in previous videos this year, I'm trying agricultural insect netting, and that's what's going over this crop today. Now I'm going to need to put hoops over the beds, and in the past, what I have used is just recycled half-inch drip tubing, which sounds kind of weird, but that is what's underneath some of these covers here. Today, what I'm going to do is use a taller hoop that's made from black plastic sprinkler pipe. And that's because these plants can get pretty tall and I wanna give them plenty of room and have a nice gap between the plant and the cover that's over it. 
So let me show you what I'm going to use for hoops and how I'm going to set it up and then we'll put that netting over it. We get a lot of questions about what these white pipes are and they are three quarter inch diameter PVC pipes that we have cut to 10 inch lengths for the height of our beds. We've clamped them to the outsides of all of our raised beds at two foot spacing and that is on both sides of the bed. The reason we put these on all of our beds is because we wanted to easily be able to set up hoops over a bed depending upon where we moved our crops each year. So our recycled half inch drip tubing fits in here very easily and it's very quick to set up a hoop system. However, as I mentioned earlier, I want a taller hoop for the broccoli bed. And we made some black plastic poly sprinkler pipe hoops <laughs> for my book, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. It's one of the DIY projects, along with hoops made from the metal conduit called EMT. Anyway, so Bill had the idea that I could just slip in some leftover half inch drip tubing into these upright supports and then easily slip the black plastic sprinkler pipe hoops over them to support them. Another method would be to pound in short sticks of rebar, again at two foot spacing, and that could support the hoops. But I'm gonna try this because it seems pretty quick and easy. Okay, so the idea is to slip the hoop over the little pipe. And there's the other one quick and easy. The biggest challenge is being coordinated to do that on the opposite side. Ta-da! Instant hoop system. Now you've seen that we have another raised bed cover. We just made the second one yesterday. And this is to cover the beet and Swiss chard bed. And this is also a DIY project in my book, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. And you can see it's got agricultural insect netting over it. And that's to keep leaf miners away from this bed in particular. Okay, Bill help me put the cover on because it really is a two-person job. And then the next important step was to put some blocks of wood and bricks around the perimeter so that the wind won't blow it off because it won't act as a barrier if the wind blows it off the bed. Okay, let's get those carrot seeds planted. So as you can see, I'm growing Danvers 126 and new Corota carrots. So this is the carrot bed, it just happens to be right next to the broccoli bed. Yesterday, I loosened the soil just a little bit near the surface, and I also added some bone meal to it. That is an organic amendment that is high in phosphorus, and as I mentioned earlier, root crops really benefit from having some added to the soil. I'm going to plant two rows of each of the varieties. I'm going to use the handle on my hoe to make my little trenches or furrows. And the thing about carrot seeds is that they only have to be covered one eighth of an inch. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be a massive furrow. Now I'm going to lightly cover the seeds water them in and I have a really important tip to share with you so you get the best germination possible. I'm watering in the seeds partly because I want them to make good contact with the soil and also because the soil in this bed is actually quite dry. Fortunately we have a rainstorm coming tonight so that will really help. So here's what you need to know about carrots. 
The seeds are notoriously slow to germinate. They can take two to four weeks to sprout, believe it or not. And also, sometimes you get spotty germination. So this tip is going to help you get a much better germination and hopefully more quickly as well. So here's what you wanna do. First of all, just plant your seeds normally, just like I did, and water them in well, just like I did a moment ago. The next thing you want to do is what is called the board method. And I know that sounds weird, so I want to explain the rationale behind it. First of all, if you think of springtime weather, we'll have some dry weather, then wet weather, then dry weather, then wet weather. And what happens with all those fluctuations in moisture is that the soil forms a crust on it. And carrot seedlings are just these wimpy little things, so they have a hard time pushing through the crust on the soil. Well, if you cover each of your rows of planted seeds with a board, that will prevent a crust from forming. You leave the boards in place for about 10 days, take them off, they should soon start germinating, and you should get much better germination. So that's what I'm going to do next. Yeah, I know, it's not very pretty, but hey, it's just for 10 days, so I'm willing to put up with that. And I just used scrap pieces of wood that we had, so there's no added expense. After 10 days, I'll take these boards off, I'll make sure this bed is getting watered really well, germination should start pretty quickly, and I'm going to let the plants grow until they're about 3 inches tall. At that point, I'm going to thin them within each row to 3 inch spacing between each plant. That's because it is very important to give your carrots enough room to grow a regular, normal root. It is so important that you do this. Now, I know that was a lot of information today. I hope it was useful. I hope you'll give the board method a try. Try some agricultural insect netting. And if you're wondering where I got that, I got it from agfabric.com. If you can't find it there, try agriculturesolutions.com. But thanks so much for watching today. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening.